A NASA spacecraft has left an asteroid with samples. What's it taken with it? Yeah, so Cyrus Le Rex landed on the asteroid Bennu. So asteroids are kind of the, the leftover bits of the solar system. They're kind of the crumbs of the baking of a cake, so to speak. And they offer a good glimpse into what really was present when the solar system was formed. Our Earth has undergone changes, as is every planet essentially in our solar system. So it's a great chance to seeing what is there. And as you're seeing, when it landed on the asteroid, it essentially sucked up as much rock from this crater as it could. In fact, it sucked so much it couldn't actually close the lid originally. Uh, they were able to close that lid uh, and now returning back to Earth. So this is very similar to the Hayabusa 2 mission, which was led by the Japanese Space Agency, but Australia participated landing in Australia back in December. So a really big achievement of being able to land on asteroids, take samples and return them. And so uh, it'll be exciting to see what secrets they kind of unhold from the solar system when they make it back to Utah in 2023. That's a long time, 2023. <laughs> it's two years to come back, goodness. <laughs> but you know what? It's probably worth it for scientists, Brad. Then look, it is. That's right. You have to be in it for the long haul. It just <laughs> shows how, you know, how for how long these missions have to work. You're not just wait, wait, making it work for three months or a year. It took years to get to the asteroid Bennu, and then it's been there for another year and a half going down to the surface and then orbit, and then yeah, another two years to get back. So everything has to work flawlessly and perfectly for you know the better part of a decade. So it's a really big feat of engineering uh, and tech, uh, technical skills. But as you said, it's kind of like Christmas, you know it's coming and then the days get closer, but it still feels very long. They will be happy to open their presents, let's say. I'm, so, I'm sure they will be, absolutely, Brad. Now, Australia's new head of its first space command has been announced. What more can you tell us about that? Yes, you know, Space Command is really, or, you know, the Space Division, as it's called, uh, which is going to be a centralizing or a grouping together of Army, Navy, and Air Force space resources, uh, is something a lot of people have pointed to, including the Australian Defense, saying we've been needing this for quite a few years. We saw uh, with Donald Trump the announcement of Space Force uh, a few years ago, which is uh, an advanced initiative, essentially a dedicated military operation uh, to space. And once that was pulled, Russia, and China, uh, Italy, France, uh, Japan have all have similar operations. And so it's really about coordinating and developing capability within Australia. And it's not necessarily fighting space wars, you know, it's not Star Wars. It's really protecting and using a very critical infrastructure, and that is space, both protecting it for operations daily on the ground, but also using it as an asset in defense. So it's a big task ahead. Uh, but a very important one to Australia and its allies. Yeah, absolutely. Sets a, a few ground rules as, as well as, yeah. you know, so many countries, as we said, are competing at the moment. Just finally, Brad, NASA and Axiom Space, they've finalised the details of the first private mission to the space station. What does that entail? Yeah, look, this is a little bit different than a lot of the space tourism we've been hearing about that is rapidly coming up in the next few months. This is really about sending private astronauts to the space station. So instead of acting as an astronaut on behalf of the US or China or Russia or Europe. They're acting on behalf of a private company. So the private company will design on the science goals, the engineering goals, the missions, the tasks they will have. And so it's a really big change in the way space is happening. Now, Axiom Space is founded by a former NASA administrator plus astronauts. So they very not, you know, very well known in the game and really trying to up what the abilities are in doing in space and making it again more cost effective. So the agreement essentially allows these astronauts access to NASA infrastructure. So a place to sleep, food, water, they're very important things. Mm -hmm. And in return, NASA gets some money, but also they are able to send more experiments on that ride into space. One of the benefits of all these capsules and rides going up back and forth is more science is happening. Instead of waiting years for a spot to get to the space station, now only have to wait a few months. So that's accelerating the science and engineering and products that can be happening. And that's including directly benefiting to Australia with multiple ideas looking at in Australia right now to be run on the space station in that space lab environment. So it's really a win all around for the space community. Yeah, great to hear. Brad Tucker, we have to leave it there. Great to chat to you this afternoon. Thank you. Take care.